Greetings. Well, this is a tutorial to show you how to actually install a LS uh, 140 amp alternator plus the kit into an RB Skyline. So this here is the part number. I'm not sure you can pick that up. It's 92058857. And this was the box that it came in. So it's a genuine GM, it's a 140 amp, and this connector is exactly the same one that is used in the Skyline. The only thing that is different is this is an M8, and the one on the Skyline is an M6, so we need to drill that cable. Then there's also this kit from CWC, it comes with a new pulley, all the necessary hardware to do it. First things first, we need to get this pulley off. Okay, so what I'm using here is my little rattle gun or torque gun and a 24mm. That should be enough to get it off. And it is. That's the one we need to get on. And it is a snug fit. A real snug fit. Now you don't want to hit this down. But it's the worst thing you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the oven to heat it up a little bit and I'll be right back. So you bake it at 200 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes until it's golden brown. Et voila! And if you don't know what 200 degrees Celsius is and you're living in one of those three countries that still use the imperial system instead of metric, not only do I feel sorry for you, but you work out the conversion yourself. But that's on. Okay, so this has had a chance to cool down. Put that nut on there. Talk it down. Bob Girani. So we're going from a one, two, three, four, five peak to a one, two, three, four peak. So it's just one more peak on the belt difference between the LS and the Skyline. But that's good to go. Yeeha. Okay, now that's done. No longer need that. I'll get all this together, get it over to the car. Time to install. So the next step is to get the alternator off. So I need to loosen up the tensioner here. Once that's done, I can then slide the belt out of the way and then right down the bottom there, there is another bolt that needs to be loosened off and then that can then come out. Now, I'm hoping I can do all that without having to drop that hose. But we'll see how we go. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't get this bolt out because my thermo fan's in the way. So I'm quickly going to undo the four bolts holding it on. And then I'll pull that out and then the alternator can come with it. I shall be right back. Okay, I got it out. It's very similar in that there is an earth strap on one and then a connection for a cable clamp on the other and this also has both of those and they're both 10 mil yep so before I go into the brackets what I will show you is that this is being held down by that nut there now this is the original nut that came off the back of it and this one here is flopping around after I took this one off. So with the kit came this. So I think what you're supposed to do is put that on. And then that will solve the problem. There we go. 
so that's what that extra nut is for instructions don't come with this thing so you've got to nut it out for yourself but this will help you along your way so yeah tighten that down and then when you go to put your cable on that goes next simple okay something else i just worked out <clears throat> this is a cable that attaches to the rear of the alternator and from memory on the GTR I believe that is a, is an M6 that is an M8 hole so just be careful with this you might want to disconnect your battery if you're um, not if you don't think that you're cautious enough then just connect your battery but that is live which is why I keep putting the shroud over it but on the GDR I believe that is an M6 and you'll have to drill it out to an M8 which means you need about it uh, an 8.5 or a 9 mil hole in order to get that over this so um, GDR owners just be aware because they use a higher amp alternator and I think it's because it's different you may need to drill your terminal out so just keep that in mind this is an RB25 and that and that are both exactly the same size, they're both M8s. So you won't have to do anything about that if you're a 25, possibly a 20 owner. But uh, for a 26, you may need to drill your terminal out. Keep that one in mind. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed is that putting these side by side, this here there's the sense plug okay so this here was the lower part that was the pivot point and then this bolt went through and then this was on the end of that so that the distance between here and here is the same as the distance between here and here so with that on that I think now this bolt which came with the kit is now the new one for here and you probably have to reuse that but I think you also need to place a spring washer and then a flat washer on that through there then onto there so that replaces the stock pivot point bolt and spacer that's the first part now I'll get around to this one so let me set that up and I'll show you Okay, so the next part is, there's the pivot point that we just discussed, right here, the original washer, that's where the spacer used to sit, so the sense plug is on this side here, if you're looking at it like this, so this here is our new adjustment point. So you have an M10 hole here and an M8 hole here. So this goes on here with this bolt which came with the kit, spring washer, washer up underneath. One second. And then place this on here. then this here will go to the original adjuster which is the same thread as that so you need to use the original adjuster on that side here with the block that side goes to the alternator 
Now I have noticed that I have a nut and a washer left over and I think that may be for this. So rather than use the original nut or that at the end of the bolt I think we are supposed to use that. So this is what I'm going to try. If it doesn't work then I'll revert back to this but I believe that's what the extra nut and washer is for. Now what is left over is this Allen key bolt as well as two washers. A spring washer and a flat washer and that is probably for whichever one of these the earth strap went on to I can't remember which one it was but when I put it in I'll know and then one of these original ones will be for the cable clamp that was also attached to the back of that so it's no more kit pieces left so I believe that is how it should be and we're going to test that so what I did have to do when I took my shroud off I had to remove my top hose and it will make it a bit easier to get in there if you guys do the same so just bear that one in mind so now I'm going to put you on time lapse and get this thing in and see if what I thought is supposed to happen is supposed to happen or if I failed. Here we go. Okay, so that is in and it's exactly how I thought it should go. So as you can see, um, wait for this. Dickheads and their sludge pumps. Piece of shit, Harley crap. Anyway, that's the way it is supposed to go. And then this here connects up to your stock tensioner. But that it was a really, really tight fit. So that's a poor four peak 850 on here. If you are rebuilding the engine from scratch or your belts are crappy, I would suggest probably going with maybe an 860 or an 870 because that was a bit of a bitch to get on. But I'll put the tensioner in now. Sense plug down here is in facing in the right direction, so I'll be able to plug that back in. And then I'll put the terminal back on and then I will get both this clamp here and this strap here on the rear which were those two little 10 mil I think what I will do is rather than go with this which came with the kit <clears throat> I'm just going to use the original two 10 mils because I can easily get a socket on that Getting a hex into that is going to be a nasty piece of work, so that one can go. This one here, now I did end up using this stock little square bracket nut that came off the back of this because when you're trying to tighten this up, the nut at the back is just spinning. So once you've tensioned it all and you go to tighten up the pivot point you will then need to try and get a spanner right down the very bottom there to hold the nut that came with it this nut so that is also not going to be used but i did use that that squarish flat one and uh, reason I did is because of the shape of it you don't need to get a spanner behind it because it just sits on the block so you can just tighten it up 
from the front side of the pivot point. So that's what I've learned out of this. So So that wasn't too bad. Once I nutted it out, it was pretty straightforward. So now I'm just going to tighten up the shroud, put the rad hose back on, and start her up. All right, everything is now hooked up. I've double checked everything, so it's all tight, good to go. So this nut here wasn't a total loss. So when I put this in storage, it'll help keep that together. Still didn't use that though. Uh, I don't think that that would have been an easier option than the two 10 mils that came with it. So didn't use that. But anyway, I'll start the car. So if this helped you or made things a little bit easier for you, I would love to hear you guys. Uh, just drop a comment, say where you're from and that's all you have to do. No need for thanks or anything like that, but I would love to know where the Skyline owners are. Now, I did buy this kit from a place called Just Jap. And I have seen those alternators as well as the kits online from different companies and to me going with just jap was a choice or the right choice for me i ordered it on a monday afternoon and they're in new south wales on the eastern seaboard and i received it on wednesday afternoon in western australia so to me that made the most sense because then it gave me the opportunity to do that this weekend now there are cheaper options, you can go with a cheap Chinese piece of shit, but you know how I feel about that crap, whereas that is a genuine GM. And the CNC machining on both the pulley and that bracket are very good, although right hardware is there. So again, better choice, I went with Just Chap. So CWC was the manufacturer of that and as you know GM is the manufacturer of the alternator so there are cheaper options out there but I'd rather spend the money and get something that I know is going to work and going to last not something made in China that was refurbished and built by people who really don't give a crap about quality and are just there to pump rubbish out the doors Pay, pay the little bit extra guys, get the right thing. So yeah. So like I said, if this helped you, just let me know where you're from and I'd I'd really love to hear from me. So thanks for watching and see you later.